All right. Yeah, we're going to start right now. And thanks for joining. And then this is the first session, uh, the first day of the Open Source Summit. And then once again, welcome to uh, this new session, this retracing, uh, integration with the Open Telemetry and Knative and Quarkus. So just a quick question. How many people actually have some experience to tracing for your application? And then you guys already heard about the Open Telemetry before? That's great. So my name is Daniel O. So yeah, I'm going to talk a little bit by myself. So I'm working for Red Hat as a developer advocate, also CNCF ambassador. So I've been spending a lot of time to evangelize the cloud native runtime, specifically like a Java world, more than 20 years, and then like a JavaScript. And I, I recently spent a lot of time to integrate the cloud native runtime, the enterprise application into serverless, sub smash, and the GitOps uh, pipeline like Argo City, Tecton, et cetera, on top of the Kubernetes. So one of my responsibilities, the ambassador, I really like to bring uh, new technology into uh, Kubernetes as well as a lot of uh, graduate projects. So here's my contact information, like uh, my Twitter and my YouTube channel. Feel free to follow me and uh, subscribe me. If you have any question around this session as well as like a CNCF and then like a, a new technology, and uh, just feel free to reach out to me uh, directly. So uh, the first thing, uh, let's try to take a one step back, try to understand why we need to think about distributed tracing at this moment. And then so many, I mean, a couple of decades ago, we have uh, just a few application uh, on top of the virtual machine, like a VMware and IBM, like a bare metal. At a time, we don't have any like a, uh, tracing tools, just we have like a, I'm gonna talk a little bit about a little bit later, like an APM tool, application performance management or uh, the monitoring tool with some nice graphical dashboard. At a time, we just keep monitoring some of the error or information in the production environment. And then, and the microservices was born almost eight, eight years ago, about almost nine years ago in 2013 from Spring Boot. And then the more and more application design and the architecture based on Microsoft's architecture and then move forward to immutable infrastructure, AKA Kubernetes. And then we have uh, more uh, think about scalability when you run and deploy Microsoft's application on top of that. And then it will deploy and scale out maybe 100K application as a pause on Kubernetes. In that case, you got to keep tracing, monitoring, and observe that application, not only like a single load, but also like a, some communication across that Microsoft application. Here's a quick example, like a uh, user, like a could be SRE, could be system admin, could be application developer. So how to define your, the application is healthy. So for example, if you already have a, bunch of the experience on Kubernetes. The Kubernetes provides the health capability, which is like a Leibniz or the Redness check. The Leibniz is just run, is just say your application running on as a pod. It's really not crash back off, not failure. And the Redness means that your application actually uh, get ready to receive your natural trapping, like a, uh, open 8084, like a Tomcat or like a Node.js application, something like that. And then that is the default uh, definition how to define your application is ready and healthy. However, you got some problems sometimes, oh, my application doesn't work, and then you got to go to that application URL, you got some error, like a 404 error or a 500 server error. That is, that in that case, you can say, oh, my application not has any longer. And then, how to find your root cause or defect error as a developer or even SRE team? You gotta find out and then you gotta go to some kind of uh, nice dashboard and then find out where is my root cause. And then sometimes you gotta find out, oh, this is not just single error, it's more like a performance issue. So if you just a couple of end user, your application functionality totally working. However, you got some big seasonality event. For example, oh, we have a uh, KubeCon, and then we got some promotion, so we uh, can give you a thirty percent discount for like a certificate for Kubernetes stuff. And more than like a ten times, uh, end user just uh, reach out to your website and then you spike your network traffic, which is 
uh, occurs like a performance issue. So there are potential a lot of issue uh, impact your application health needs. And then here is the uh, observability how to uh, detect your application status. So some people try to use these three pillar or term interchangeably, like a metric and then logs and traces. So you can maybe say oh, uh, similarly or with the uh, metrics, but there is actually some different definition for metrics, logs, and traces. So metrics is just like a literally number of describing particular process and then uh, activity uh, measure some specific period of time. For example, Prometheus is uh, one of the popular tool to collect metrics data. It can be from the application layer and then platform layer, like a Kubernetes, also operating system. It gather all uh, metric data, but that's not easy to figure out what that means exactly. So that's why you integrate like a graphical dashboard such as a Grafana with Prometheus. It uh, make you more easily uh, understand the metrics means. And the logs, you can just put in the all logs, immutable logs in from application or even your kernel or a system level or a file IO system. This kind of all logs. And then trace is more like related to your Microsoft's application. I, I already mentioned earlier, you have a bunch of the Microsoft's application on top of the Kubernetes. And then each Microsoft is actually communicate across that kind of stuff, like a supply chain. So sometimes one of your Microsoft's application fail, and then it could impact entire Microsoft's application. So that's why you got to have like a socket breaking capability. Even if one of the Microsoft is fail, you don't want to uh, just fail entire microservices. So that's why uh, you got uh, some socket breaking or full tolerance stuff. In order to find out which microservices is failed right now and what kind of the other microservices impact from that failure of microservices, that's you're going to trace that application, not just using log4j or some kind of log library on your application. So how do you deal with the, the kind of three uh, observation components or pillar or terms or whatever you call it? So you gotta have a, a nice like a vendor's APM tool like a Dynatrace or uh, the SysD and there are so many bunch of the uh, trace tooling and which is like under the APM application performance management. And then there are uh, four step like an instrument, like a using like an API or SDK or some protocol. And then with that, uh, your application actually uh, collect the data and then processing like integrate like your dashboard like a Grafana to visualize that metric for SRE even developer. It make meaningful your actual metric and load just like a bunch of JSON files. And this is a pre locking. Uh, approach. So whenever you try to uh, gather a metrics, and then you're going to export that telemetry data in another platform from this Kubernetes and that Kubernetes or this virtual machine and another cloud provider, and then you cannot just uh, import that data because that data already uh, locked in uh, some of the vendors format or some SDK. So we're going to things change that from open source way and then with open source project and the tools you don't have a lock-in but sometimes uh, there are some different format okay this is a JSON this is a prototype this is a binary how to uh, exchange that data uh, between uh, collection or processing even visualization so the following question, whenever I talk about this topic, and then a lot of people ask me, hey, Dan, so, okay, that is really cool, open source way, which is we really prefer, and then where can we start? So the question just arises, and then you might be interested in CNCF landscape, and then under the Linux Foundation, there are so many projects you can just filter, like monitoring, logging, and tracing, and as you can see here, there are more than uh, 20 uh, like open source project, like a Jaeger, and then open tracing, open telemetry, and then like a uh, uh, logo stashy. And then some of the vendors actually uh, productize that open source project 
on their product as like a cloud service, like a SASE or on-prem stuff. So this is cool, but still you got some problem. Too many choices. If you just individual like a software engineer or just you wanna try uh, like an experiment, experiment a thing, doesn't matter. You can just pick it up one of them and then just try to on your local machine like a, your Mac OS laptop or Windows or like a Linux operating system. However, if you have some responsibility for uh, selecting your technology stack for observation in pro, and then it's too many choices of which tools, framework would be perfect, optimized in my production environment. And then, so today I'm gonna just a little bit uh, narrow down uh, two popular projects. One is open tracing. This is your first standard uh, tracing uh, open source tool. And then it just allows developer to keep tracing your Microsoft application like a traffic and then telemetry data and then just explore like a, uh, another backend server like a Jaeger server or something like that. And then, so in a, a next, uh, in a, one of the, one of the popular project and invented by actually Google. Uh, this is not only just the application side, but also it's more like uh, focus on uh, collecting telemetry signals and data from IoT Edge devices and then, uh, and then like a hardware device, not just only software application. And this is a two uh, open source projects so popular and I saw a lot of people actually adopt this project and tools and then uh, stand up their own uh, tracing and uh, distributing tracing and observability infrastructure. And then, as you probably know, so one of the common practice, there are multiple open source projects in the same area, they have a big competition, and then in the end, maybe one of them survive and the other one will be died. However, this is a super interesting part. Two projects actually combine to one super cool project, Open Telemetry. So you don't need to abandon one of them. You, one of, you already have experience, uh, have open tracing or open sensors. You can just adapt open telemetry because open telemetry combine of two existing project and provide a more better benefit. And then here's a uh, quick uh, example and then quick uh, explanation about what kind of component of open telemetry provides. So first of all, specification which he uh, just tried to describe the multiple program language, not just only Java, but also like a PHP Python or even Golang. And then the developer actually implement and that kind of uh, tracing stuff with that API and SDK and using data protocol, AKA open telemetry uh, protocol, uh, OLTP is not an online uh, transaction protocol, by the way. And then instrumentation, it also provides a library and for developer and application developer as well as SRE uh, to make uh, actual the tracing uh, the data or potential signal uh, and then export to whatever you want like a Jaeger or GPIN and any backend server. And the most important at least uh, the part is the collector. You can uh, actually collect data and the processing export to backend service. Uh, just wherever you need. It's not related to any specific vendor product. It's a 100% a vendor uh, agnostic. So this is just super cool and the beauty of the open telemetry stuff. So for example, so I'm gonna really be a showcase Quarkus new Java framework, just like a Spring Boot, but it 100% focus on Kubernetes environment. At a time when we designed that, uh, as a Red Hat designed that Java project uh, three and a half years ago, we actually adapt open tracing as a tracing capability. And now we switch that open tracing uh, functionality into open telemetry. Pretty easy to do that. And then we did the Kubernetes and then cloud environment, not just single cloud, like a multi-cloud, hybrid cloud, and then a lot of enterprise company uh, try to evolve existing Microsoft application into serverless because after analyzing your existing workload on the production and then you just find out, okay, so maybe 
only less than 20% my application workload should be running all the time, like 24-7, not entire application. So how to reduce my like a public cloud utilization, like a Amazon, Google, Microsoft, it's a pay-as-you-go strategy. If you run application all the time, it's just all your money. So that's why people really interested in serverless. And back in 2014, Amazon Lambda is the first uh, the the serverless uh, the frontier. And now there are many pro, uh, public cloud company as well as the Kubernetes Knave project uh, provide their serverless capability. However, the serverless just like uh, it will scale down to zero, like uh, just uh, hibernate if you have any natural traffic. So this is a totally different thing. So when you, your application running all the time as a pod or even just uh, like a single process on top of a virtual machine, you can keep monitor, observe that application, your like a open tracing, open telemetry, whatever you call. However, serverless application is scaled down to zero and then go up anytime, any soon. So how to keep monitoring that kind of thing? But I don't want to add some specific or some uh, like a, some Frankenstein and then and then not good experience to add some kind of logic my application or my system. So this is one of the challenges to uh, observe your serverless application up and down with the uh, tracing tool, specifically open telemetry. So today I'm going to use three open source project, Quarkus for application side, like a Java, and then uh, serverless side, the Kubernetes and Knative. So Knative, just in case uh, who uh, never ever heard about before, the Knative, one of the uh, CNCF project, it allows developer and SR team to manage your just imperative Microsoft application as a serverless. So once you deploy application with Knave specification, like a YAML file, and it will scale down to zero default time period of 30 seconds uh, without any network traffic, just like Amazon Lambda. And then the Knave has own autoscaler, not HPA, uh, uh, based on Kubernetes, which automatically scale up when you have a natural traffic using RESTful API or the uh, cloud events. And then I'm gonna use the open telemetry tracing the application. So just in case, so Quarkus, uh, just everybody saying supersonic subatomic because of the Quarkus built on Kubernetes, which means, so the Java was born 27 years ago. At a time, Java so dynamic behavior, which means when you create a Java application and running on virtual machine, you can have a dynamic behavior. You can run any virtual machine, any uh, middleware uh, from any vendor, so which is a cool at a time. But things change that runtime moving forward to infrastructure, uh, immutable infrastructure, AKA Kubernetes, which means you just need to scale out same application from one to a thousand. And then Java is a pretty slow and then heavy way uh, under the dead uh, Linux container and Kubernetes. So we optimize that kind of thing and as much as possible at build time. And then when you run, it's super fast, for example, if you have just a single RESTful API, it takes uh, like a half a second to start up. And then with the native executable file, like a just EXE file, like a window operating system, but this is a Linux format, it just takes 10 milliseconds to start up. So one of the big challenges when you use serverless, it, you need to use the core star strategy. It takes maybe three seconds, two seconds, which is pretty annoying to end user. However, if you just start like a 10 millisecond to start up, it never ever be figured out by end user. It already scaled the down buffer. And there are so many bunch of stuff. Uh, this is how it works away. I'm gonna skip that. So the build time, and then once you build application, and then uh, it automatically uh, build two different type of the native executable, like I mentioned, and then running a jar file like on top of JVM, just like a traditional way. So I'm gonna stop the slide deck and get right into the demo and how it works. Okay, so uh, 
So here's my terminal window, and then I actually uh, created just sample application with the Quarkus. And then uh, the Quarkus community project, we release every two weeks to new version, which is super fast, like an open source project. We actually released last night and to 12.2. And then this is a sim sample application, uh, just like a, a Hello World example, like a let's put URL and hello, and then uh, just return the hello from let's say it's reactive. And then this is a traditional way how do you uh, store data, I mean, log information like uh, using logo project, something like that, and then print the logo, logo in up, uh, print out your console for developer experience. And then uh, this thing, and I, I just need to add one more application, uh, things like that. So in order to showcase pretty interesting stuff, I'm going to run Quark's application as a runtime. It actually provides a bunch of developer experience this is not related to 100% uh, open telemetry, but it's a pretty good experience for the Quarkus is running, and it, as you can see, so live coding activated, here we go. So this is a pretty interesting for developer to develop application. And then I'm gonna open new terminal window, and I'll try to access endpoint. And then I gotta want the hello from mess is reactive thing. And also, uh, when I press W from the runtime, and it just open up the landing page, and then go to the UI, and then it showcase graphical what kind of dependency capability you actually uh, have right now. And then back to the uh, my IDE, and then uh, here we go. There are press R uh, is uh, running the continuous testing, which is cool. <laughs> So most developer actually needed to uh, follow test-driven development. However, it's pretty annoying to have a test-driven development capability. You need to add a third-party library or like a, some kind of tool. However, this Java framework actually provides that kind of feature out of the box uh, status. So as you can see, one test uh, scenario is just testing. And back to the IDE, let's try to change that like a hello, uh, I'm gonna delete it here. Hello, uh, open source summit and EU. And then I just also needed to cha uh, change my logo message and then save a file and then back to the terminal. And then you can see I just failed my test case. I just save a file. I just need, I don't need, I don't even need to recompile, rebuild, restart, redeploy. It just showcase because when I go to my application here and then it actually uh, expect this result. And however, when I go to a new terminal and I just access my application, I got a new one. So functionality is still working. However, I failed a test case. This is a hugely important because when you run, uh, follow test-driven development, whatever you develop serverless or just uh, general microservices, maybe sometimes, okay, my application just working on my local, however, you just commit that application to your like a GitHub, and then that code will be deployed to production in next 30 minutes due to the, your fantastic CI CD pipeline. And then sometimes it ruins the entire system like a cascading error. So that's why we needed to use tracing, but also we need to make sure your application totally working, not just business application uh, checking, but also test case at all. And then I just need to update to here. Uh, save a file and back to the here. You gotta you gotta succeed here. So uh, just I'm gonna add a new uh, something like that. Here we go. And then uh, let's try to new uh, method here. And then I'm gonna to add a new pass. Because you, uh, it'll, be, it, we, it'll be great to trace two different uh, RESTful API. And then uh, like a hello uh, EU. Let's try to change it. Like a welcome to uh, Quarkers, Knative, and hotel uh, project. And I'm gonna do like a username. Okay, so that's it.
And then uh, I need to report the username from my local file system. Something died, uh, like a username. That's it. And then I just did it, and then back to the my terminal, and then you, I got some error already. So because I didn't even define here the failed to loading compilation value username, it's automatically show me that is a literary live coding capability. And now I go to my property file and the username on my proper name Dan. I just save a file and then I gotta uh, succeed. Uh, succeed and then back to the terminal and I'm gonna try to new uh, RESTful API and then welcome to Quarks Knib and Hotel uh, Daniel. This is it. And uh, just one more thing back to the here Dev UI and he's a computation editor. So a lot of people actually prefer to use GUI rather than CLI or some file system. So you can see my name here. I'm gonna change it in my full name and save a file and back to the terminal. And then I'm gonna just chat. I got a, I got a new return. However, when you go to my IDE, the local file system also change it automatically. So maybe uh, this is just something good uh, for like, that kind of thing. And then go back to here. And I just missed the uh, log steal the previous one. So let's try to change that here too. Just copy and then paste here. Okay, and then back to the here, my terminal. And then when I go to the greedy, and I got the output here, welcome to the same tracing. So maybe this is just uh, maybe traditional way how to uh, store your, your logo information. And then when you deploy this application to Kubernetes, you can go to pod and then you can find the logs with that kind of thing to trace uh, the logs for the troubleshooting. So now I'm gonna do, need to just run with the open telemetry stuff. So to do that, I needed to add like open telemetry thing. Uh, I'm gonna add export open telemetry extension. Uh, this is uh, the allows my application to use open telemetry tool. And also I needed to uh, another extension capability to deploy this application in the end to Kubernetes. Okay, I just added two. And then here's my uh, needed to run open telemetry and the backend server Jaeger. I have one uh, Docker Compose file. So here we go. So I'm gonna run Jaeger with this export port. And then here is the open telemetry collector from uh, Jaeger. And then here is the, my computation file. As you can see, I'm gonna use the OTLP uh, protocol uh, with the, the gRPC and uh, the, the, uh, the version two as well. And I'm gonna export this open the telemetry signal into backend server Jaeger and using the Jaeger uh, default port. And this is just some uh, simple computation how to uh, collect data from application using open telemetry collector and then export that data into backend server Jaeger. So I'm gonna use the Docker Compose to run two uh, container. One is open telemetry, the other one is Jaeger. So using uh, Docker Compose, and just up, and then it just uh, start up pretty quick, and then try to make sure the running two process here, open telemetry collector and the Jaeger. And then go back to browser and then try to uh, open the Jaeger uh, dashboard here. So you can see there's the just default Jaeger query, and then I'm gonna to run my application once again. And then it automatically connect to existing uh, open telemetry collector because I already set it at that kind of stuff. Even if I didn't add any compilation on my application properly, properly file here, but it automatically set it up on Java framework because the when you go to the UI, Localhost 8080, and Q and Dev, and here's the compilation, and you can actually find open 
telemetry, all kind of uh, resources and automatically set it up, like enable true and then the kind of all kind of stuff. Okay, back to the here. And then let's try to, here we go, and access to like 8080, like a hello. But for that, when you go to there's no uh, actual application tracing data. And then when I run, and then back to the here, I got the load just traditional way. However, when I uh, reload the Yego UI, now I have a new service here automatically detect, just like a project name. And then here's a one operation like a hello, and I go to tracing. Okay, I got a one uh, Jaeger tracing data here. And also uh, back to normal, and then if you I uh, call once again, and it also automatically uh, two kind of stuff. This right that. And then if I access to another API here, and then you can see the new API when you reload the Jaeger UI and a new operation find out here, and then you can find the new uh, tracing data. So in the meantime, the application, the Java application, automatically uh, uh, just uh, generate uh, like a logo file. And that logo information actually print out your terminal, just like a traditional way. However, a telemetry co collector uh, keep collecting that telemetry data from your application automatically and send it to a uh, backend Jaeger server. Uh, this is just some kind of uh, your dev environment uh, for application developer standpoint, how to use uh, this kind of thing. But this is actual uh, like a serverless application. It's not a uh, Kubernetes environment. So I'm going to stop and I'm going to deploy this application to Kubernetes right now. So this is uh, my Kubernetes. It's uh, the uh, Red Hat Developer Sandbox, which is uh, for free, any user. You can once sign up and then we provide a uh, free Kubernetes cluster on the cloud uh, for 30 days. And I already installed a bunch of the uh, operator. Here is the uh, Jaeger operator. And this is a uh, open telemetry, telemetry operator. And the last thing is open the serverless built on Knative. So I already uh, installed operator Knative and uh, oper the tel open telemetry and Jaeger. And first thing is, I'm going to go back to my application. I'm going to add. Uh, a few configuration uh, to deploy this application, uh, deploy Kubernetes to true, and also deploy target, which is Knative. You could be Kubernetes and open ship to Knative, and then container, image uh, group, which is my actual namespace here, hotel, Knative Java. So I'm going to do that, hotel, knative, java, java, and then one more thing, container image and registry, which is in, the OpenShift cluster actually includes uh, integrate container registry, like a Docker Hub or a Google Container Registry. It already have own container registry, so you don't need to use external container registry. But if you want, you can do that. So I'm going to use uh, the integrate of the image, image uh, registry, G and registry, and that service name and 5000 port. And then I'm going to open uh, uh, this part access to uh, just application and URL. And then one thing, I need to add the OpenShift cluster by default using self-certificate for TLS termination. So that's why I set it up this kind of stuff. OK, I just done. So I'm going to deploy this application right now to uh, the Kubernetes. But for that, I need to set up uh, to create a Jaeger. So create a Jaeger and a new instance Jaeger uh, pod on my project. And I just create it. And I go to like a graphical UI console, and then it show me uh, topology view here. And then I also needed to add Jaeger uh, things. Here's the I mean the open telemetry collector. In this case, I'm going to use the Jaeger, uh, the backend service name, 
And here we go. So one thing different on my local is the Kubernetes environment. I'm going to use here the uh, certificate uh, because it's more like uh, uh, secure your application. So I just copy and back to here. In the meantime, let's try to create open telemetry collector here. And then I just paste that and create a new one. And now I have two pods. One is a Jaeger, the other is the open telemetry. And when you click on Jaeger and you can find here, here is a for Jikin server, and Jikin server back uh, the Jaeger, and then here is the uh, all kind of services you expose for uh, your open telemetry collector. So one more thing, last thing is go to KNAV serving project. And then I'm going to need to new KNAV serving, which allows me to deploy application as KNAV serve uh, services. And then back to the, my IDE. And then here is my KNAV serving. And I'm going to use a Jeepkin endpoint, which is actually part of the, the service in Jaeger server. So copy that. And I just create. And then it will deploy a bunch of the pod, uh, like auto scaler, and then like a like a collector, some other stuff. So back to my terminal, I'm gonna run uh, my deploy my application. In the meantime, it uh, will uh, do some of the st uh, step. For example, uh, packaging application like a Java application, like a Java file, and then uh, create a container image like using Docker file, and then. Once the container image is built, and then it will uh, be deployed, uh, pu 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 uh, push it into integrated container registry. And then last thing, the Kubernetes worker node uh, will run the container image as a serverless. So back to the VOI, and then it's almost done. So I'm going to load that uh, topology view. So if we have the all the application like a scalar and then like a domain mapping webhook. It's all HPA just deployed and then back to the, our uh, working project here. So now we're gonna need to uh, go to like a Jaeger new dashboard, not my local. It uh, provides the uh, single sign-on. So my username Daniel O. Here is my Jaeger UI, it's actually running on Kubernetes. And then, as you can see, as my local, there's one the Jaeger core default services here. And then once our application almost deploy, back to the here, okay, we build, so say deploy. So here is new, uh, my Quarkus application. And then when you deploy Quarkus application, and then here is my URL. And then, uh, it will deploy in a second. Maybe I'm going to reload that uh, topology view. So Wi-Fi internet is a little bit flaky here. So uh, as you can see, the pod is view locked. And then this is a pod. And then back to the here. And then try to access that URL, like a hello endpoint. I got a, uh, the same result. And back to the here, I got the result just like a tracing, like a traditional way. However, back to the Viego UI, and then I reload. And then now I got a new, like a open telemetry, like a just serverless that deployment. And then I got a new operation like a hello. And a find tracing, we have a one tracing. And then this application automatically scale down to zero in the next 30 seconds. So let's give it a, uh, give it some moment, and then it automatically scale down to zero. And then when, when you just uh, invoke one of the RESTful API, it automatically goes up, just like Amazon Lambda, just like a serverless behavior. And then, uh, and then, and then after that, open uh, the telemetry collector, uh, get that uh, signal from the application, and then just send that signal telemetry data into Jaeger server with its new uh, the service name. So it will uh, go down to zero uh, it pretty soon. So after that, it will terminate automatically, and then I'm gonna uh, terminate it, and then I'm gonna try to 
call one more time with a new API, for example, greeting, and then it will go down. And so in the meantime, we are almost running out of time. I got a, a, one last slide deck here, so maybe bigger. So I already uh, created a demo video on my YouTube channel, the Binyu URL Daniel TV. You can scan QR code. You just go to and find out all existing tutorial, not only uh, open telemetry, but also uh, Kubernetes and then like a Quarkus and a serverless function and then like a GitOps and Argo City pipeline. You are more than happy to subscribe and then so give me a, uh, some inspiration. I need to run something new about like a Kubernetes or like a cloud every application development or even uh, GitOps like a practice. And then uh, it will be uh, very helpful for me to create a new content, like a technical demo and then like a just inside the thing. Okay, let's go back to that and then application go down. There's a no part at this moment, zero. And then when I go to run this new app and it automatically start, container is starting and the new logs here. And then go to part and you can find the, the log file here. And then go back to Yego UI and then you can see new services just uh, added here. And then new operation, this is your old one, this is a new one. And then go to uh, hello greeting, you can edit it and find out here. If you go to uh, X one time, and then it will tracing to that one. So the, just uh, summarize, so I don't even add some kind of specific thing to enable uh, open telemetry collector on my application side. It automatically just uh, collect the telemetry data and then push it into a backend server, which is Jaeger. So whatever you deploy application as the general part or serverless on top of the Kubernetes, this is a pre-exist way to observe your application for troubleshooting or to trace your data in your production environment. And then uh, thanks for coming, and I will be sticking around. If you have any question, and just feel free to reach out to me directly. I'm more than happy to address the question. Thanks a lot.